Hi everyone, welcome to STEAM. Uh, today we're making a, kind of a watercolor art and we're going to be using tissue paper and um, it'll be using diffusion, so that's our science term for today. Um, it's going to be just the color from the tissue paper is going to bleed onto whatever paper you have. So that's going to be the diffusion technique we're using today. So I'll show you an example of one I've done before. Um, so here's what I've done before. It is uh, more of pinks, reds, orange, yellow colors. Uh, the darker colors you have, the better. The very light pinks, um, light blues don't show up too well. So when you're picking out your materials for this one, uh, just think about getting some nice, bold, strong colors. So what you need for this project is just um, tissue paper, any kind of tissue paper, and in some colors you like. So I'm going to be using blues and greens today. You're going to need some water, so it's just a cup of water here. A napkin if you want, um, just to put your paintbrush down on. A big thick paintbrush is fine, you don't need any fine lines for this one, you're just going to be using it to disperse your water. And a piece of paper, any kind of blank white paper or canvas, anything will do. Um, so our first step in this one, oh, and of course, and some scissors. We're going to need some scissors as well. So those are the only things you need for this one. So our first step is actually to take your colors. I did about four sheets, half sheets of tissue paper. This is going to be more than I need. It's really only going to need enough to cover your whole paper. So my paper is a little bit bigger, but even still I'm not going to need a whole page of each. So I'll probably cut it in half again and then cut out my pieces. So your first step is just to cut out all of your pieces. So they work really well in just kind of abstract shapes, like rough squares and rectangles uh, work really well. You can just layer them however you like. So I'm just going to kind of cut them in strips and maybe shorten some of those strips, make some longer. And they're going to be about the same. But this one's really doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just however you like. Uh, you can try shapes though if you want to try cutting out a heart or stars. Um, they might show up as long as you don't put anything really close to them. They, they will probably show up, so if you do want to try more distinct shapes, that is a good way to do it too. I'm going to do more, more abstract lines with this one, so I can just cover my whole sheets, and that will be enough. And I'm just going to try to kind of do some little ones, some bigger ones, just for the variation on this one. Alright, so I've got my little strips cut out, I've got some different colors, and I'll just put those on there as I, as I see fit, just any way that you think will look nice. Um, they kind of bleed into each other, the colors, so if you've got some that you like together better, then you can put those ones near each other, and if you've got some that when they mix they won't be the best color, um, you could keep those ones a little further apart. But let me pull just a few apart so I'm ready to stick them on my paper. Alright, and your next step, you don't, you don't necessarily have to do this step. You could just put water on top of all of your put down strips. But what I like to do, I'm just going to bring my water over here, is I'm just going to wet my whole paper first. I'm just going to kind of put some water on there just so that they stick a little bit better and then I don't have to worry about moving around a lot so I'm just going to start like that and I'm going to kind of go from greens and then I'm going to kind of fade down so that's my plan oh something about this one is um, you, you'll get little marks on your fingers so if you want to avoid those little colors on your fingers, just wear gloves, but they do wash off, it's not gonna, not gonna stain, so don't worry too much. Alright, so I'm just gonna put on some greens, I'm kinda, kinda 
fill this whole top portion with these darker greens. And then I'm going to go, I've got my two strips. I think now I'm going to go into my lighter green so it kind of fades down. But yeah, I am going to add the water to my paper. Don't worry if your paper's kind of bowing like this. That's definitely going to happen. That's all right. And I did a little bit of overlap here. That's where you're going to see that melding a little bit more. So if you want them to meld, which I do, I'm going to kind of fade it out. So I'm going to overlap them a little. If you don't want the colors to fade, but you want them to be next to each other, leave just a little bit of a gap between them so that they will actually not touch in the final product. But see this little gap I put here? It's small enough that there will probably be a green spot there still. So remember that they do kind of disperse. So if you leave just a little space, it won't be enough to leave a, a white space there. All right, so I did my green, light green. I'm going to go to light blue now. And you'll notice my light blue is still a little dark. Like, it's definitely a bright blue. Because I didn't want it to be too light. Like I said earlier, they don't show up super well if they're too light colored. They kind of lose their color. So I'm just sticking on. I'm going to add the water to the rest of my paper because it does stay wet for a little while. If you let it dry on a flat surface, it'll get flat again, so don't worry if it's not as flat as you want it. Let me get a big blue strip to finish that off. Alright, and then my last layer is going to be this dark blue, so I kind of went from a dark to a light, then light to dark here. And I am doing a little bit of layering so that they diffuse into each other. So they kind of have the mixed colors, which I like that effect. Alright, and it is getting on my fingers. I'm not worried about it. But if you are, just wear gloves or use the paintbrush to stick down your papers if you're worried about that. Alright, and so you can see that they actually are already pretty wet. But I like to make sure they get really on there, so I'm going to add water all over the top. So let me add a little green here because I missed a spot. And maybe a little actually blue right here because I like that, maybe a little more fading. And once you have all your paper down, you just want to get water all over again. So you can actually see all that color go. It's going to get on your brush. That's all right. You can actually see faded a little bit there. So you don't want too much water because you don't want to wash out all your color, but you just want to get them wet enough that they're going to stick onto your paper and then really disperse all over your paper. And this one's a great one because if you don't like how it turns out the first time, you can definitely just add more color on there. Pull these off, and if you need more color, just put on some more colors and do it again. This one's a good one for experimenting with the colors. and You can see how different colors mix together to make other colors. If you put them close enough or overlap them. If you don't have the exact color you need, you might actually want to mix colors. Use a couple different ones. So I'm going to put that all there. All right, I'm going to wash my paintbrush off. And then it should be ready to take the strips off. You can wait a few minutes if you want, but the color should have dispersed already. So I'm going to go ahead and put the strips on my napkin so that they don't stain my table at all. The colors should come off, so don't worry too much, but if you do have a napkin or newspaper to put them on, I would recommend it. Alright, so here's the fun part. You get to see all your color come out. 
So you just want to peel off those strips that are wet, so I'm going to put them over here. Just pick that up, peel it off, and you can see that the light blue and the dark blue are kind of melting together, which is what effect I wanted. Here's some green and blue together. The green's a little bit of a lighter color, so it didn't come out as much, but I like that effect that it's making here. I'm pleased with it. And if you want it to melt a little bit more, you can kind of turn your paper around or angle it as you're picking them up. Ah, that one's a good one. Got a lot of color on there. And my dark green, I can tell, is going to have a lot of color. You can see it coming out, even as I was painting it with my water. Very nice. Alright, and I kind of want them to fade more together, so I'm going to hold it upside down a little bit to give it a chance to kind of fade together like that, and you can see them dripping down. But I like how it turned out. I think it's pretty cool. So this one you can see, there is some pretty straight lines from where I have my rectangle shapes. So if you did do a heart or stars, anything like that, they probably would show up pretty well. So if you wanted to try different kind of shapes or you can try to write your name, that's a good technique to use to do that. A little different way to do things. So this is my final product and I like how it turned out. I think the blues mix together really well and if you wanted to go back in, I'm going to leave these little white spaces because I like them like this, but if you did want to go back in and fill in these white spaces, like I said, you can just water it again, put on your colors again, and fill in those spaces to get a full color effect. But sometimes you might like those white spaces, so it's fun to experiment. Alright, so thanks for joining me today. This is your finished product, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this one.